Alright guys, how's it going? I'm CordyD93 and we're back on Pokemon Omega Ruby playing some uh, Battle Spot doubles. Uh, same thing as VGC this year. Very fortunate to have that. And I have a new team. So, last time I posted, um, it was actually the last season of Battle Spot, so my rating will have reset. I was running a Mega Lopunny Thunderous team, which is kind of cool, but Mega Lopunny is kind of fit or miss. Sometimes it'll wreck teams, and sometimes it just dies. And you kind of saw that in my last episode. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, but today we're working with what I think is a little bit more solid of a team. S still not very good sets. i got to update this team. Uh, on Showdown, most of it's fine, but on my game, a lot of it's old stuff. So my team will be Low Kick Mega Kangaskhan, uh, Pixie Plate Hyper Voice Sylveon, Assault Vest Entei, which, I don't know, thing has 50% chance to burn stuff with Sacred Fire, but it almost never does. Um, Landorus, which, honestly, I don't know if it's Choice Scarf or Choice Band. I will look at that when I start my video. I was running both of them, but I don't remember which item I kept. Um, I want to say it's Choice Band now, but we'll check. Uh, Gengar, which is one of my favorite Pokemon in this meta, just because Ghost is really good typing. And then Life Orb Bisharp, which I really hated last year and I like refused to use it. But now that Landorus is running around everywhere and Life Orb Sucker Punch kills it, uh, it's pretty darn good. So we're going to find a battle. Um, my rating is 1530 with two, a 2-0 record. Uh, last season I ended up going like 1313 when I got 11 DCs. So I recorded one. Um, and then I tried to record another one, I got super frustrated and just gave up, so, um, we're gonna get in this battle, and because the ratings have just reset, you really don't want to discount anyone on the ladder, because everyone went back to 1500, so, you could have people that were at the top of the ladder just a few days ago who are now at the same rating. Uh, my opponent's team is going to be Lopunny, Zumeril, Togekiss, Ma Isle, Mammal Swine and Ludicolo. So immediately we see three different fairies, which is really crazy. Um, Gengar is going to do a crap load of work in this match. I assume that they're going to bring Mega Lopunny, not Mega Ma Isle. Just because Ma Isle's Intimidate, which is going to give my Bisharp the boost. So I'm going to assume that they lead off with Lopunny. So I'm going to start Gengar, because. Low punny really scares me actually, it's really fast fake out, it really does work against Kangaskhan, and um, a burn's going to be super important on it. Uh, Gengar is also good because Ludicolo, if my opponent chooses to lead it, cannot fake it out. So as to what else I'm going to bring, um, I'm going to say Sylveon does a lot of work here, and then Kangaskhan seems to kill pretty much everything else. It can't touch Ma Isle, but I really doubt she's going to bring it. And then I have to choose if I want Landorus, which I'm checking is Choice Band. Uh, against Mamoswine, I don't particularly want it. Bisharp could do pretty well. Ah, oh, what the heck. We're, we're going to bring Bisharp, even though I don't think she's going to bring Ma Isle. Entei is kind of a liability against Mamoswine and Ludicolo. Um, so we're going to get into the match. We'll, we'll see how good Bisharp does. Without the Intimidate boost, it's really lackluster. Um, but I, I've had games where it has saved me. And we're going to lead Sylveon Gengar. Let's see what she leads. Togekiss Lopunny. So pretty much what I expected. Um, Togekiss will, is going to be unable to prevent Sylveon from... Hyper voicing the crap out of Lopunny, it becomes fighting type, so it dies to Hyper Voice. Um, it does follow me. I think Clefable is way better, but whatever. So, Lopunny is going to fake something out. I assume Gengar, because it gets scrappy. Uh, but then it dies to Hyper Voice, so I think my safest play is to not predict any protects an Icy Wind with Gengar and Hyper Voice with Sylveon, so that way if um, Togekiss follows me, follow me, um, I'm going to hit either way, and we don't, so I assume we're going to see a Tailwind here as, is that regular Lopunny? What the heck? Um, 
And Togekiss Thunder Waves, uh oh. Alright, so protecting Sylveon was the right play there. I did consider that. My, I'm not choice specs, but um, I can just freely burn the low punny now. I could also go for a sledge bomb on the Togekiss, but eh, let's do that. I, I, it's, there's no way he's not going to follow me this turn. So I'm just going to Hyper Voice Sludge Bomb. As Togekiss protects, and he's still not Mega Evolving. I'm vi I guess he's refusing to Mega Evolve. Oh, what is going on? Teeter Dance? What? Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I don't think I've ever been in a game where I just have no idea what's going on. Um, Teeter Dance is a move that confuses everything on the field, and my opponent just confused everything I have. What is happening? I didn't even know Lil Punny got that. I, the only example I can think of is when you Teeter Dance into Ludicolo because it has own tempo and can't be confused. So... Oh boy. Um, I did reveal the Sludge Bomb, so I assume Togia is going to switch here, so I'm going to try to burn Lil Punny, and then we're still going to spam Hyper Voice. As Lil Punny switches out, not Togekiss. And to Mile, they did bring Mega Mile, so... Um, best case scenario, I get the burn off here, and it does connect, so that is beautiful. My opponent brought regular Lil Punny and Mega Mile. Um, and that Togekiss is just going to spam T-Wave, so... We'll see if... Uh, Sylveon gets off an attack here. Uh, and that is the second or third turn row that Sylveon has done nothing, but... We are in a really incredible position getting that burn off a mile. Um, kind of neuters it, and if my opponent decides to switch it out and save it for Intimidate later, um, because she does not have to Mega Evolve it, it's pretty common to see with mile, uh, then Bisharp's just really going to wreck her team. So even though both my things are paralyzed and confused and probably not going to be able to attack, uh, I'm in a very good position, and I'm just going to Sludge Bomb the Togekiss and... Hyper Voice. I really need to kill this Togekiss so it doesn't just paralyze everything on my team and prevent me from attacking. Uh, that burn is, gave me a lot of momentum, um, but if I can't kill Togekiss, I'm going to lose all of that momentum. Is The Iron Head is going to knock out my Sylveon pretty easily, even through the burn. Um, and Gengar flinches. Cool. That sucks. Uh, we did see my opponent Mega Evolve, which means Bisharp will not going to be that useful. Um, but I think I'm going to bring it in here just because uh, Mile can't really touch it, and it does get an Iron Hef Head off on Togekiss that's pretty significant. So I can either double the Sludge Bomb or I can Icy Wind. And I don't know if Togekiss is going to protect or not. I assume it's not. I'll go for Ic Icy Wind just in case something tries to switch in. And then we're going to Iron Head the Togekiss. And it does protect, so the Icy Wind was the better play. I guess protecting the Sharp was a good play too. Um, as we see the play rough come off, so... Actually doing significant amount of damage, that's got to be Adamant Mile. Um, Ray Rizzo made the careful one really popular, but this one's pretty heavily offensive considering it's at minus two attack, and I need to kill this Togekiss or I'm just going to lose. Kang does work in this matchup, but this thing needs to die, so I'm going to Iron Head and Icy Wind. As the Iron Head does go off, yes, it does knock it out. Okay. So I believe I'm going to lose Bisharp here to Ma'al, assuming that the play rough does connect. Um, as I take Life Orb Recoil. Um, but nope. My opponent makes a really weird play, deciding to knock out Gengar with Iron Head. So Bisharp is still in. I don't believe my opponent had any other Intimidate. But now I get a free switch into Kang, which I believe should clean up here. Um, but we will see this. I assume Lil Punny's coming back in. Um, and I know it does have Fake Out. I don't actually know how fast regular Lil Punny is, but I have no particular reason not to Fake it out and then protect my Bisharp. So, 
I mean, my king is kind of super slow, so it might just fake me out, but Miles not doing a whole lot. King's pretty bulky. Uh, Bisharp gets protect off. That's fine. Um, Lil Punny fakes out Bisharp, actually. Interesting. Um, I guess a low kick would have been the better play as Lil Punny's going to take a crap load of damage. Um, and Miles just going to play rough into the king. Just does... Oh, no! <sighs> this Miles giving me a lot of trouble even though it's Shouldn't really be doing anything. Um, gets the attack drop. That's super unfortunate. So, I don't really want to see any other shenanigans with my opponent. Um, I assume we're going to see a protect off the mile here in another tier dance. So, I'm just going to try to double edge this low punny and then iron head into the mile. I don't want to rely on sucker punch. Um, yeah. Okay. I didn't want to rely on Sucker Punch um, because I assume Low Punny's not going to attack. And it's still faster than me and Encore's me, so I think. <sighs> I think we've actually lost this game despite the fact that I had so much momentum. So it's really frustrating to see my opponent rely on Teeter Dance, which is not a move you ever see, um, as I'm just going to be locked into Fake Out. And Mono's going to go down eventually, but Drain Punch, yeah. I can't believe I just lost to a regular low punny, but you see crazy things on the ladder, so. Um, that's going to be game one. Wow, that does so much damage. I'm so confused. It's acting like it's not burnt. Um, we're just going to forfeit here. There's no reason to fake out again. Um, so that's going to be game one. We're going to take a loss. Just whatever. Confusion sucks. You miss. <clears throat> uh, that Togekiss gave me a whole lot of trouble, and maybe I should have let off with Bishart, but that's alright. Um, we're going to continue battling because I need to re redeem myself after that. That was bad. And definitely going to use my battle box again. Gives you the option to use stuff in your party, but I don't really want to do that. So, we're now 2 1 with a rating of 15 16, and I think I'm going to do some more laddering um, not on YouTube. Just so I can get a little bit higher up on the ladder. Get some uh, more competitive matches. So we see my opponent has a weird team. Their name is Pokemon. Alright. Um, Amoongus, Rotom Heat, Kangaskhan, Garchomp, and Aegislash. All pretty common. And we see a Slurpuff. And what the heck is that doing there? I know in singles, you use it because it gets unburdened. So you belly drum. And... If there's an Amoongus on this team, we could see something like that. I mean, it's physical, and its attack stat is pretty low, so I think it's just a really crappy Azumarill. And I see no reason why you would use it over Azumarill, but... Um, Alright, I guess that works. So, Bisharp looks really good here, um, in terms of knocking out that Slurpuff, and dealing with Aegislash. I don't really want to lead it though. I, I want to lead with a way to deal with Rotom Heat. So I think I'm going to bring Entei this time because it can. It basically just kills Amoongus and Aegislash, walls Rotom, and then theoretically should be able to burn Kang and Garchomp easily. Um, I don't really want Sylveon at all. I mean, it kills Garchomp, but that's all it does. I could lead Kang, that's pretty safe. Uh, but I think... Mm, do I want Gengar? Yeah, I think I'm going to leave Gengar so I can taunt his um, Amoongus. And then I'll bring my Kang and my Bisharp in the back. So we're going to leave Landorus and Sylveon this time. Uh, Landorus is good, but I know he's going to bring that wide guard Aegislash. And then if you're choice locked, it doesn't really do anything. So we're going to try to save myself there and... We're going to get into this match. So they're going to lead Aegis slash Garchomp. So the combo I expect to see here is a Wide Guard as well as a um, Earthquake. He can't touch Gengar that way. But, um, yeah, he can't touch Gengar. But he will be able to hit Entei and he won't touch his own Aegis slash. So I believe my correct first play here is to Sacred Fire the Aegis slash and then go straight for the Will-O-Wisp. 
Um, Gengar's is going to be the fastest unless we see a Shadow Sneak or something weird out of the Aegislash. Um, and we don't. So we're going to see if this is Lumberry Garchomp as the will o -Wisp does connect. And it is not, so he goes straight for Rock Slide. Um, I don't know if that means Aegislash is going to try to set up a sub. Uh, but Life Orb, okay. As Entei does connect with the Sacred Fire, let's see a burn here too. And wow, that does a lot of damage. And we do get the burn, so that was really good. Unfortunately, we also prop the weakness policy. That is the risk you run with attacking um, Aegislash. But the burn was really huge because he can't stall me out with King Shield anymore, as he's going to be taking a lot of residual damage. And I know that he is not. Um, ooh. He is not. Um, leftovers. So he's going to die next turn regardless of if he king shields or not, so he has no reason to king shield. Um, and my NT is going to die here, so I kind of want to retreat it, and then Icy Wind, as I'm going to kill the Aegislash. Slash, if he king shields he dies, um, and then I'll get a whole lot of damage off on the Garchomp, so Kang is my safest switch in here, especially against Burnt Garchomp, Rock Slide isn't going to do a whole lot. And Entei is going to be really useful later, assuming that my opponent brought Amoongus, which is pretty strong against my team. So, uh, we do see the Shadow Sneak out of Aegislash. Uh, let's see if that's enough to KO. Yes, it is, even through the burn. So, good play on my opponent's part. I really was not anticipating that. Um, as the Icy Wind would have been really huge to get um, gar lower Garchomp speed, but... I guess that's not going to matter, as we're going to bring Guard Drop down to maybe, what is that, 60%, 55 and Aegislash is going to die to burn, so uh, we're going to trade knockouts on our ghost types, and that's okay, and I'm going to bring in Bisharp here, uh, Guard Drop has not revealed Earthquake, and he's already burnt, so I can take one pretty easily, as my opponent's going to lead Kang as well. So, I do have options here, um, actually, let me check something. Yeah, I know, you're supposed to know your Pokemon when you go into battle. Um, my Kangaskhan actually doesn't have Scrappy. This is one that I bred differently. And we're going to try it out. So I assume my opponent's going to fake me out. So I'm going to go for the low kick without Mega Evolving and protect Bisharp. So if he fakes out my king, I'm actually going to get more damage off on him. Um, because he will not be able to fake me out. As we do see the Amoongus come out. Um, and if he fakes out Bisharp, then I'm just going to get damage off and that's fine. Uh, Garchomp switches out, so... Uh, we have knocked out Aegislash, so we're not going to see any other Pokemon. He just has Amoongus, King, and Garchomp. As he's going to fake out my king... And let's see the inner focus doing work, and wow, that does a lot of damage. Okay, crit. Uh, Kangaskhan gets off the low kick. That's actually really good damage right there. Um, now, I can switch out into... Um, okay, here's my thought process. So I kind of want to bring in Entei. I don't know if I want to bring in him safely or not, because Amoongus is probably going to Rage Powder to get rid of... Um, he's probably going to Rage Powder here to avoid Sucker Punch. So I think just doubling into the Kangaskhan with Double Edge and Knock Off is my safest play. I do fully anticipate a Rage Powder, so Sucker Punch is not going to be ideal. And then I get to bring in Entei safely. So this Amoongus is going to give me huge issues. Uh, we'll see how much the Double Edge does here. His king's probably faster. So he's going to power up punch my king. Okay, might be able to take that. We'll see. No, he gets the critical hit and I not get knocked out. Alright guys, I think we might go 0-2 in today's episode. And that really sucks. Um, that double edge would have been really important in hitting that Amoongus. Especially seeing how it doesn't even have that much defense. So that... That double edge would have been really important, and um, yeah, that's really rough. So Entei's going to come in, and uh, this Amoongus can just keep Rage Powdering. 
And there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I do kind of have to predict what he's going to do here. I assume Entei is not the biggest threat to him. Hmm. I, it's Assault Vest, though, so I have no Protect. So I can Protect on Bisharp, and he might expect that. I assume he will. But if I'm going to get back into this game, I'm going to need to kill this Amoongus and have him hit my Bisharp for no reason. So we're going to Protect, and if he Sucker Punches Entei, this is game over. Um, as he Protects Amoongus, oh no. Okay. Uh, he, he did misplay, um, he did not kill my Entei, but at the same time, I did not kill Zamoongus, so I think what's going to have to happen right here, there's a 33% chance that I can pull off the double protect, as we know he's not targeting um, Bisharp, so if he Rage Powders, takes the Sacred Fire, Actually no, no. Here we go. We're, we're gonna du we're gonna double protect. We need it right here. So we're gonna say good fire to Kangaskhan, which was what I should have done last turn. I was stupid, and we're gonna get the double protect. All right, let's see it. Come on, Bishar. Oh, it does. All right. So Mungus does rage powder. Um, he didn't spore, which is good. And as long as King doesn't attack Entei, all right. So that actually worked out somehow. <laughs> As now it's a game of sucker punches. Um, the sharp is going to be able to knock out Kang. The question is, will Garchomp be able to kill both of my things with one earthquake? And with the life orb, I think the answer is yes. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure this game's already over. Um, I can Sacred Fire into the Garchomp, because why not? And then I can Sucker Punch the Kang and knock it out, because he's not using Sucker Punch for some reason. He may not even have it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yep. So, <sighs> assuming his Garchomp... Yeah, there, yeah, okay. He, I'm not even sure his Garchomp has EQ, but Rock Slide's going to finish me off. As, nope, the sharp hangs on, but I, there's really nothing I can do at this point, so. <laughs> Maybe if I get, like, <laughs> three double protects. I don't know. Alright, we're just going to try to stall him out because this is funny. Um, maybe my opponent will misplay and EQ himself or something stupid. But his Garchomp protects, actually. Okay. If for whatever reason I can kill Kangaskhan with a Sucker Punch and he does not Sucker Punch, which he has absolutely no reason to. Um, Alright, well whatever. So if I protect, uh, his Sucker Punch doesn't do anything. And I don't think um, Garchomp's going to be able to hang on. So and I don't think a Rock Slide's going to kill me. Uh, let's see the second double protect, though. If I pull this off, this is going to be kind of crazy. Uh, I fail. Okay. Kangaskhan Sucker Punches, though. That's a good sign. Garchomp Dragon Claws. Alright. Nope. That's going to kill me. Alright. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. It ended up being a closer match than I thought it was going to be, as um, Garchomp is going to go down here. Um, and I was really just going to have to protect and stall Kangaskhan out of Sucker Punches. That gets into a really bad mind game, so... Uh, this team, not the best, so I'm still working on it. I gotta breed some more stuff and get everything that I haven't showed in the game. Um, nonetheless, pretty decent battles. I'm gonna try laddering on my own just to get my rating up so we can get some more exciting matches, some more standard meta stuff. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching guys, and stay tuned, because hopefully I'm gonna be on a more regular recording schedule um, for the next couple weeks. So, yeah, catch you guys next time.